Wilkins. Can I help you? Hi, I'm Jim Bender, and this is my wife, Ann. We're looking around for a new car, and I'm interested in your scouts. Do you mind if we just look around? Not at all. I'd be more than happy to show them to you. Let's go over here and check out a few of the leaders. Now that you've had a good look at the scouts, what's your opinion of them? Well, they are good looking, and I can't believe all the room inside. Much more than in our station wagon. It sure would make grocery shopping a lot easier. But I don't know why Jim insists that we need four-wheel drive. I just don't see much sense in it. That's understandable if you've never owned a four-wheel drive vehicle before. But tell me, what kind of driving do you do? Well, I guess we're like most folks. I use it to go to and from work the year round, and my wife uses it to do the shopping and haul the kids whenever they have to go somewhere. And we like to get away every year on a vacation, so we use it to tow our boat. That sounds pretty typical of most people, and the Scout is designed to do all of those things as well as more. But the big difference is that the Scout can do those things when your car can't. What do you mean by that? I mean that your car is designed to meet your daily driving needs under normal driving conditions. But when conditions become abnormal, like in deep snow, on rain-slick streets, or on muddy country roads, the added traction of four-wheel drive will pull you through when your car won't. Now that you mention it, there were quite a few times when I couldn't do the shopping or take the kids to their lessons because I thought the car would never make it. And how about the times you couldn't get into work? That's right. There were times that the roads were so slick that I thought old Betsy just wouldn't make it. But the guys in their four-wheelers all made it without trouble. That's the big advantage you have with four-wheel drive. It'll do things the average car just can't. And I'll bet that there have been times when you couldn't launch your boat where you wanted to because it was too rough or too sandy. Am I right? You sure are. And I can see how Jim would be able to get to some fishing spots that he can't get to now. I can see where there would be times when I would feel safer with four-wheel drive. But I've heard a car with four-wheel drive is complicated and hard to drive. I can appreciate you wanting a vehicle that's easy for you to handle. And the facts are that the Scout is just as easy to drive as your car. As a matter of fact, with Scout's wide range of options, such as a choice of four transmissions, including a smooth shifting automatic, you can tailor it to fit any driving need. Or, if you prefer manual shifting, you can order your Scout with its standard, fully synchronized, three-speed transmission. For performance, Scout offers a fully synchronized, close ratio, four-speed manual. But if you plan on pulling heavy loads or driving where the going really gets tough, your choice should be Scout's wide ratio four-speed manual that gives you additional pulling power and low gear. That all sounds very convincing, but what's that? That's the transfer case shift lever. It allows you to select one of two four-wheel drive ranges or economical two-wheel drive when four-wheel drive isn't needed. You see, that's another choice you have with a Scout, the ability to select four-wheel drive only when you need it. That sounds like a pretty good feature. But what's a transfer case? I've never heard of that before. That's a good question. Let me use these illustrations and explain the complete drivetrain to you. Let's start with the drivetrain of a typical two-wheel vehicle, like your station wagon. You already know that the transmission is an important consideration. Its purpose is to adapt the engine to the prevailing conditions of the load and speed of the vehicle. The transmission rotates the drive shaft, which carries the power from the transmission to the differential, which further carries the power to two rear axle shafts and finally to the rear wheels. In a two-wheel drive vehicle, the front wheels are connected to a single front axle but rotate independently of it whenever the vehicle is in motion. For four-wheel drive operation, 
several components must be added. First, the front wheels are attached to two axle shafts, which can provide the front wheels with power. The front wheels are attached to the axle shafts through special hubs. In the Scout, these hubs can be locked and unlocked to give you a means of controlling the engagement of the front wheels with the axle shafts. I'll get back to the hubs in a few minutes. A second differential is needed to provide power to the front axle shafts. And another drive shaft is added to transfer power to the differential from the heart of the four-wheel drive train, the transfer case. You see, the transfer case in the Scout can provide power to both the rear and front drive shafts in the four-wheel drive mode, but only powers the rear drive shaft when the vehicle is in two-wheel drive. That's all well and good, but how hard is it to drive? Actually, very simple. With the exception of the transfer case shift lever, it drives just like your car. Notice that the shift lever has four positions, four-wheel low, neutral, two-wheel high, and four-wheel high. With the transfer case in two high, where it will be the majority of the time for your normal daily driving, it directs power to the rear drive shaft. The Scout will drive like any typical two-wheel vehicle. When you need four-wheel drive, all you have to do is stop and shift the transfer case lever to four high. If the front hubs are already locked, you can shift to four high without stopping. The transfer case will now power both the rear and front drive shafts. But if the hubs are not locked, simply rotate the dial of the manual locking hubs to the 4x4 four four position to lock the front wheels to the axle shafts before you start up. If you plan on climbing steep mountains or crossing the Sahara Desert, you'll need extra low speed power and traction. And that's the purpose of 4 low. The drivetrain components will turn at a slower speed, but with over two and a half times more pulling power. And the Scout's two-speed transfer case is standard, not an option that you have to pay for. And when you shift the transfer case to neutral, it's mechanically disengaged from the transmission. No power is transferred to the front or rear wheels. This is a feature that makes it unnecessary to disconnect the drive shafts if you want to tow your scout behind a motorhome without any fuss or bother. All you have to do is put the transfer case in neutral and the transmission in park or high gear in case of a manual and off you go. That all sounds simple enough, but you lost me when you locked the hubs. I didn't quite understand all that. No problem. I did say earlier that I'd get back to the hubs. It's another way that Scout has of giving you four-wheel power when you need it and two-wheel economy when four-wheel drive isn't necessary. You see, if you had no way of disengaging the front wheels or letting them freewheel when you were moving in two-wheel drive, the front wheels would drive the front drivetrain even though it's not being powered by the transfer case. But Scout standard manual locking hubs allow you to disengage the wheels from the axle shafts by simply rotating the dials to the 4x2 position. This eliminates all that extra drivetrain rotation, increases fuel economy, reduces wear, and makes steering a lot easier. And when you stop to shift the transfer case to either of the four-wheel drive positions, simply rotate the dials to the 4x4 four four position to engage the wheels. When you rotate the dial to the 4x4 four four position, a collar attached to the hub engages an adapter on the axle shaft, as this arrow indicates. The wheel hub and axle shaft then act together as a single unit. But when you rotate the dial back to the economical 4x2 position, the collar moves away from the adapter, disengaging the hub from the axle shaft. This allows the wheel to turn freely. You mean that I would have to get out of the car to engage and disengage the front wheels? I knew it would be inconvenient. Wait a minute. That's true only for the standard manual locking hubs. You can outfit your Scout with optional automatic locking hubs to take care of that chore automatically. All you have to do is stop, shift the transfer case to four-wheel drive, and the hubs automatically engage the axles when you start up. For normal highway driving, just shift back to two-wheel drive. 
and the hubs automatically become disengaged and freewheeling. The automatic locking feature works whenever the hubs are set in the auto position. Their principle of operation is quite simple. The basic mechanism consists of a cam assembly attached to each front axle shaft. Located inside steel cylinders bolted to the hub and wheel assemblies. The cams are part of the axle shafts and the cylinders are part of the wheel hubs. If the axle shafts were to begin turning right now, they would merely spin inside the hubs without turning the wheels. That's because there's nothing at this point to connect the hub cylinders to the axle cams. That's the job of roller bearings riding between the axle cams and hub cylinders. When the transfer case is in four-wheel drive, power is transmitted to the front axle shafts and they begin to rotate. The rotation of the axle cams in either direction, forward or reverse, makes the roller bearings ride up to the high points of the cams where they become wedged between the axle cams and hub cylinders, firmly locking them together. The hub cylinders now rotate with the axle shafts, driving the front wheels. Shifting to two-wheel drive disengages the power flow to the front drive shaft. The axle shafts become idle and stop rotating, leaving the roller bearings free to settle into the low areas of the axle cams, disengaging the hub cylinders from the cams. The front wheels are now freewheeling in either forward or reverse. As you can see, the automatic locking hubs also have a manual lock position. It works the same as the manual locking hubs and is used whenever four-wheel engine braking is needed. Boy, now I've seen everything. Traction and power whenever I need it, and economy for normal driving. By the way, are there different axle ratios available? With Hold it. I haven't the faintest idea of what you're talking about. What do ratios have to do with it? Your husband just touched on another important choice that you have in order to get the balance between power and economy that's just right for you. Let me explain. When you're driving in high gear, or drive in the case of an automatic transmission, the engine, transmission, and drive shaft are all turning at the same speed, usually several thousand revolutions per minute. The engine has to operate at these high RPMs to produce its power, but if the rear wheels turned at this rate, you'd be driving at about 200 miles per hour. Obviously, something has to be done to convert the high speed of the engine, transmission, and drive shaft to a much slower speed at the wheels. That's one of the jobs of the differential. A small gear on the drive shaft is used to drive a much larger gear inside the differential. If the large gear, called a ring gear, is three times as large as the smaller pinion gear, it would rotate at only one-third the speed of the smaller gear. The difference in size between the two gears is called the axle ratio. In this example, the axle ratio is 3 to 1, or simply 3.0 as it's normally stated. This axle ratio, or gear reduction, as it's also called, results in the wheels of your car rotating at a much slower speed than the engine. Interestingly enough, Power has a unique relationship with speed. A high axle ratio, such as 4 to 1, for example, will greatly reduce the speed of the wheels, but will deliver much more power than an axle ratio of 2 to 1, which will provide higher speeds, but less power. Speed and power are inversely related. Does that mean that we can pick an axle ratio that will give us more economy and less power, and vice versa? That's exactly right. You can choose a numerically high axle ratio, which will give you more pulling power, faster acceleration, and lower gas mileage. Or, you can select a numerically low axle ratio, which will normally provide better gas mileage, but will have a little less pulling power than higher axle ratios. That means that you can tailor the performance of your Scout with a super powerful 3.73, a gas miserly 2.72, or one of several other axle ratios to give you the just right balance between power and economy. Don't forget that the transfer case provides an additional gear reduction of 2.62 when you shift to four-wheel low. 
Simply multiply the axle ratio of the differential by the 2.62 axle ratio of the transfer case to obtain the effective gear reduction at the wheels. I'll be more than happy to recommend the right combination for you, whether it's for trailer towing, extensive off-roading, or your normal in-town driving. Well, honey, what do you think about four-wheel drive now? Let's take another look at that pretty green one that you liked so much. I think it has everything we want. I saw an automatic transmission, an automatic locking hubs, and I think it has a low axle ratio. And I love the interior. Your choice of engine, gasoline or diesel. Transmission, automatic or manual, three speed or four speed, wide or close ratio. Manual or automatic locking hubs. Axle ratio, high, low, or somewhere in between. We've got them all in stock and waiting for you with just the right combination of performance and economy for you. For specific fuel economy information, ask your Scout sales representative for the Scout EPA estimates. Let the four-wheel drive leader help you pick the model and options that fit you best. You'll never regret it.